Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Batori, you know I sent a letter after the NTSB findings and lessons learned from the Amtrak 501 derailment in the state of Washington. And the FAA response to my uh, letter states that, quote, FRA's investigation of the Amtrak 501 accident found that training for assigned crew members did not comply with federal regulation and was a contributing factor in the cause of the accident. And FRA's enforcement action is ongoing, end quote. So I don't want to talk about the ongoing investigation, but can you explain how a deficient crew member training standard was able to comply with FRA's existing regulations, and what are you doing to improve those regulations? As, as far as what transpired that morning and when I learned of it, um, just from my career experience, I shook my head in dismay um, to think that you would have an inaugural train with uh, an engineer, regardless of what level of training he had of proficiency, and not have a road form of engines on that train. Was, it's just unprecedented. We, we don't do that in the railroad industry. So there was a failure in management to allow that to happen. On top of that, there was a conductor that was trying to get qualified on the territory. So now you have somebody that is not familiar with the territory, an engineer that's supposedly qualified on the territory, communicating back and forth in the cab at the early hours of the morning. And when I saw the, the video, in-cab video, and also the audio, um, it, it, I just shook my head in dismay and said that should never have happened. It was like the perfect storm. It's not representative of this railroad industry. But unfortunately, there was that incident. Well, so what, I mean, your and, job obviously is the oversight of that culture. So how did this happen and what did we need to do to address it? Amtrak was not enforcing its engineer certification program on line characteristics in that particular instance properly. And we do spot checks and audits on engineer certification programs to make sure the carriers are complying. But as I said, what transpired there that morning was something that should never have happened. So, so what should we do to update our rules? If you're saying like we did spot infection, well, what we, should we do to make sure that Amtrak the, creates the, that culture? The, ru ru the rules were there, but you know, you can write rules and rules and rules, but it takes people to enforce them. And the people that were responsible for enforcing them either were, were not cognizant of what they were supposed to enforce, or if they were cognizant, they were lacking fulfilling their duties. Do you mean people within Amtrak? Yes. And so what should FRA do about that? If you, if you think, because obviously we're going to keep going through this, and now we just had this discussion about what, or what may or may not get done by when, 2020. What do when, we need to do to make sure the if, culture addresses this issue? Well, with that, there was necessarily a lesson learned, and, and Richard Anderson and, and his uh, organization was new. Um, they realized that they had an issue, and they have done a lot uh, as far as improving the organization structure in the operating department and the culture that's there, in, in so far as adding additional road form of engines, getting the rides in with the engineers that they're supposed to, doing more training, uh, both in the field as well as in simulators. Um, R Richard has done an extremely good job in addressing that. So you're confident I, that I'm adequate very, safety is in place at Amtrak? I feel very comfortable with everything that they have done as a result of that lesson learned. And so you think there's adequate safety there now? Safety never never sleeps and never ends. You've got to keep on top of it constantly. And, and, if you, and it doesn't matter who's at the helm. Okay, you've got to stay on top of it. People don't come to work to have an accident. That engineer didn't want that to happen. But if you listen to what he said on that audio, okay, it's scary. He should never have left. So, um, I'm very interested, look, I get cultures are hard to legislate. You have to create the safety standards, and you do have to make sure they're implemented. So from FRA's perspective, I just want to know whether you think that everything FRA has done to date, you've done everything you can to make sure that that's implemented. Yeah, I think the railroads, 
first are uh, the responsible parties and the men and women who lead and maintain and operate those railroads. It's FRA's responsibility to do a check, double check, and make sure everything is being fulfilled. Um, as I often share with people, and I think this is a good news story, even though it's one too many, as far as head-on collisions, which uh, uh, were the most pronounced type of collision that the railroad industry had. Um, I may have shared earlier there was a, to <clears throat> a total of um, six, 68 head-on collisions in 1978. And the industry today, and one is one too many, but last year we only had one, and that was in Casey, North Carolina, between CSX and Amtrak. So we're definitely going to be keeping the record open. So if there's anything else that you, FRA wants to suggest during this time period, uh, we'll certainly continue to look at implementation of recommendations from the NTSB on this accident. Um, and if I can, I would certainly afford myself to your, your staff to give more information, both at request as well as I have more I can Thank share. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Batori. Senator Gardner. 